Well, uh, let's bring on uh, Joe Tipton. Uh, you know him uh, certainly on uh, on social media. You can follow him on X or Twitter at Tipton Edits uh, as we talk some college basketball recruiting. Joe, thanks so much for coming on. How are you today? I'm doing well. Appreciate you guys having me. Excited to be here. All right. So before we get into talking basketball, tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, you're you're a young guy, mid twenties. Uh, you've become, you know, certainly one of the the leading authorities on all things college basketball recruiting. Uh, you know, how did you get into this line of work, and and how did you kind of you know build things up the way that you've been able to? Yeah. So I started making graphics just kind of on my phone in the later years of high school and throughout college, and obviously turned into a recruiting niche covering these kids didn't even really know it when supplying graphics you also have the scoop of where a player is going at the same time so i would just post hey so and so is committed to syracuse and with the graphic that i made for them um and then following college graduation on three brought me on um serving as their uh, national basketball reporter covering recruiting in the transfer portal um and then really haven't looked back and i've loved every second of it well, we love following you, and, and uh, you, you know it seems like you're breaking news on a on a regular basis. Let's let's talk about this Syracuse program, if we could. And you know, Adrian Autry now entering year two, and and you know we've noticed here locally that the the level of recruit that Syracuse is in on seems to be getting better, right? A lot of top forty guys. Have you noticed a change and a difference, uh, you know, of late with Syracuse and kind of the level of talent that they've been in on? Yes, definitely. I mean, we saw it this past year, rising freshman Donnie Freeman, a top 10 recruit, five star on every site. Um, Sadiq White, the 2025 prospect that's already committed a top 30-ish guy as well. And then you just look at who else they're targeting. Of course, Kai and Anthony, who Syracuse fans are very familiar with, um, you know, a top 30 to top 40 guy. So I think Coach Autry and his staff have made it a priority that they want you know, the best of the best when it comes to the high school talent, but then also, of course, dabbling in the transfer portal as well. We, we've discussed this on our airwaves a lot about them going after these bigger name players out of high school. Is that because of the transfer portal, do you think? Do you think more schools are in on bigger names? Because if you do miss, you can get somebody out of the transfer portal? Uh, yes and no. Um, I think... Recruiting guys out of high school, if you can retain them, it just leads to continuity. When you recruit transfers, you know, they don't know anyone. They don't really know the coaching staff. Maybe they had a prior relationship, things like that. But I think it just builds better culture. Um, just with speaking with college coaches, they still want to recruit the high school guys, even though they're younger. But there's, you know, obviously they're recruiting some guys that very well could be one and done talents, but at the same time, they're recruiting players that'll be multi-year. Um, so those high school guys can ultimately create a better sense of culture because you've got a guy like Jair Davis, who I believe is in his final year of eligibility, Eddie Lampkin, he might be in his final year. They're, you know, upperclassmen, but then obviously we saw, uh, you know, a year and a, uh, two summers ago, they bring in JJ Starling. So, um, he had only done one year at Notre Dame. So I think a lot of it is just trying to build the culture as best they can versus just a lot of these transfers that are just kind of on one-year deals. Let's talk about this class of 2025, if we could. And, you know, Sadiq White is the one guy who is verbally committed. They're in on a bunch of others. We'll get to Kai and Anthony here in a second. But let's start with Sadiq White, the, the one guy who is, you know, is a, a firm verbal commitment. What can you tell us about him and, uh, you know, what kind of player will he be uh, for the Orange? Yep. So he is actually transferring down to IMG Academy for his senior year, similar to Donnie Freeman, what he did in his final year of high school. Um, they're both kind of a, they're both four men, Donnie and Sadiq, but they're a little different. Donnie can shoot it a good bit better than Sadiq. That's, that's part of it. Part of uh, the shooting ability with Sadiq is still improving, but both are high class athletes. Um, Sadiq has a, Super high upside when it comes to his defensive ability, long, bouncy, um, originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. But yes, Coach Autry were able, they were able to wrap him up, wrap him up early. And it sounds like he's kind of going to work for Coach Autry, right? Trying to recruit some other guys. You know, we see that quite often when a recruit commits and, you know, he wants to be joined by some some other high-level players. Um, what can you tell us about where the class of 2025 stands for Syracuse outside of Sadiq White and some of the other players that they're in on and, and you know, some other guys that Syracuse fans should should really keep their eyes on? Yeah, so I think the one thing that immediately pops and stands out to me about Syracuse's recruiting in 2025 is – 
they were in on guys really early. Like you notice a lot of other programs will jump in on kids, you know, in April, May, June of this year. But they had guys like Derek Dixon, Kyan Anthony, London Jemison on campus several, several months ago. So I think one thing that might be giving them a leg up is the, you know, obviously we live in this world of NIL and yes, that will dictate recruitments, but it also goes back to the relationship that they've been able to build perhaps longer than some of the other programs that have just now jumped into the mix. Like a guy like London Jemison, I think he visited Syracuse back in January at the very beginning of the year. And now he's got schools like Kansas, Louisville, Alabama, just now kind of trying to play catch up. So in a lot of, in a lot of facets, Syracuse has been ahead of the game, making their priorities known, um, kind of heading into their junior year versus their senior year. Um, so, but yeah, they're on guys like London Jemison, of course, Kai and Anthony, who I think they're in very good position with. Um, they're still after a guy like Derek Dixon, who he just included Syracuse in his schools. He's also got programs like Pitt, Virginia, Arizona, North Carolina, and others. That one might be a little bit more of a, a dog fight than you might expect. And then of course, Kai and Anthony's close friend, Tyler Jackson. He's always been viewed, um, as Syracuse as the leader in his recruitment as well. So, um, and the most recently hosted a Caden Lewis, one of the top point guards in the class of 2025 as well. So um, things are looking, things are looking pretty good for Syracuse in this 2025 class. I know this is going to sound like a strange question because, you know, you would normally think you want to get as many of these guys as possible. Is there a sweet spot in your mind, Joe, in terms of how many of these, you know, high level incoming freshmen a program should have versus the veteran guys out of the portal, so on and so forth? I mean, can you have too many? I guess is my question or, or is the sweet spot like three or four guys? Yeah, I think you can have too many freshmen, but I also think you can have too many transfers. Obviously, if you're rebuilding a roster um, in year one, obviously this is year two under Autry, but you know, programs like Michigan and Louisville, they basically have to recruit their entire team out of the portal because everyone else, you know, transferred out. But I think the sweet spot, at least when it comes to high school guys is, is, a, is around three. Um, obviously coach Autry, they're going after the high level guys like Donovan Freeman. He may not be around if he, if it all goes to plan, um, sure. you know, so guys like him, um, but then also you want, you know, multi-year guys that, like I said earlier, that you can stack year after year out of high school. And then I view the kind of the transfer portal as more of a way to like plug in, um, guys that, that are on a need, uh, basis. So like when they bring in Eddie Lampkin, well, they need a, a strong and powerful five man, well, then he's, you, you know, the guy for you. So I think you just kind of, it's based on need in the portal, uh, following the off season based on who declares for the draft, who, you know, is graduating and then who ultimately decides to transfer out. All right, let's circle back to Kyan Anthony now. And, uh, you know, I mean, his story around here is well documented. And I, I think many have been just under the assumption that he was going to come here. And, and we see that he trims his list down to six. He's got a bunch of visits that he's going to go on and says he wants to make his announcement, uh, you know, prior to his senior season starting up. You mentioned a moment ago, you said Syracuse is in pretty good shape. Bring us up to date on, on his recruitment and, and how you expect it to play itself out. Yeah, so he has the top six of Auburn, Florida State, Ohio state rutgers court syracuse and usc florida state was in there early uh as well as syracuse auburn ohio state rutgers and usc are all very new programs in the mix as far as i know no official visits have been scheduled for cayenne um i would be surprised if he does go on all four of those visits like i said he's already been he wants to return to syracuse for a football game he said that publicly but i would be surprised if he visits usc rutgers florida state and auburn because in my mind if i'm a coaching staff at one of those schools that are kind of on the outside looking in that kind of arrived to the party late i really have to have a good feeling that this kid is not just a lock to cuse for me to even like bring him on campus and make him a priority for my program and i think based on gathering intel and all the information that you hear kind of in recruiting circles is that if Cayenne doesn't end up at Syracuse, then it will just be a shock to almost everyone. Now, of course, there's other schools that have offered him, you know, he's a good player. Of course, they've offered him a scholarship, but it'll be really interesting to see which programs bring him in. And if no programs like Auburn, Ohio State, you know, USC, Rutgers, if they don't bring him in on a cam on campus for a visit, then I think it's just very telling as to where he'll end up.
You know, there was a lot of uh, talk about him in Indiana, and then Indiana wasn't in his final six. Was there any reason for that that you know of? Yeah, so I actually spoke to Cayenne at Peach Jam and asked him specifically about Indiana because I had noticed back in uh, May during the live period, Woodson um, was the first coach there watching him. Um, and so I was like, oh, Indiana's really in on Cayenne Anthony. Makes sense, obviously, the relationship that Woodson has with Carmelo. Um, and then I followed up with Cayenne a few months later at Peach Jam, and they said that he said, Cayenne said that Indiana had um, backed off a little bit and wasn't recruiting him as much. So it appears that Indiana decided to go in a different direction. Now, I don't think that's based on um, his talent because I don't think Cayenne is lacking that, but maybe it was just, um, you know, they didn't want to get into a recruiting battle and end up, you know, losing to Syracuse or, you know, even another program. But um, I think that they, uh, Indiana ultimately just decided to um, go a different direction. Yeah, I was going to say it could be they think he's going to Cuse and they're they're backing off and you know figure they don't have a chance, which uh, which would be good certainly for uh, good news for Cuse fans. All right, so you, uh, you we mentioned Sadiq White's coming here. Uh, you think that Kyan Anthony's coming here? If you had to pick another one or two out of the names you listed of guys most likely to come to Syracuse, who would they be? Um, I would probably say Tyler Jackson, um, who played with T Mello. Of course, Carmelo is sponsored. Uh, EYBL team um, with Cayenne. Um, their best friends are very close. Um, I think Tyler's considering a handful of other schools, but I really think that Syracuse is at the top of his list. Um, London Jimison, um, there's a chance there's a really steep battle with programs like Bama and, and Kansas as well. But like I said, Syracuse was in on him early. Um, and I know they're they're in a dog fight for a Caden Lewis who just recently took an unofficial to Syracuse. I think he's going to plan back or return for an official. But you know, when you have Duke and Carolina and Kentucky and UConn and Auburn and all these other programs recruiting you as well, um, you know he's a he's a very highly sought after guy. But I would say you know an ideal situation is you know, if I'm just kind of forecasting the future, it's a class of Sadiq White, Kyan Anthony, and Tyler Jackson, and then you hope for hope for one more. Man, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'll take that any day. <laughs> that is pretty good. Um, last question for me, Joe, just kind of a big picture question. I mean, you're, you've got your pulse on recruiting. What, what are the priorities for these kids, the top priorities for most of these kids? I realize, you know, it, there are different circumstances for different players, but are you finding that, you know, NIL is is kind of number one on the list in terms of how much can I make and, and that's where these kids end up going? Is it who can get me to the league? Is it, you know, is it, you know, who can who, who can I, you know, get to the NCAA tournament with and make a run at a Final Four? What, what are you finding is the, you know, the be-all and end-all with most of these kids? Is it the money? Yeah, if players will always say, at least publicly, that it's never really about the money, but in my experience and speaking with college coaches, how frequently the dollars come up goes against that. So obviously there's certain players that come from certain backgrounds that, you know, money may be less important to them. But I think at the end of the day, it's like you think about it, if you have a few job offers, well, if you have three job offers for 100,000, 300,000 and 500,000, well, I'm probably looking at those top two offers um, just because right. it's the best business and financial decision for me to make. But I, if, if NIL is at number one, I would probably put it at number two. Um, but then also playing time is a huge thing, especially for these freshmen, these high level freshmen. You know, they have ex they have high expectations, sometimes a little bit too, too much expectations. Um, but then all players really it, they always talk about who can get me to the NBA What's the pathway for me to be able to achieve that in as little as years as possible? They obviously want to go to a winning program, but very rarely do I hear players talk about like, oh, I want to go to the final four and I want to like play in March Madness. Like as sad as that is to say, that really isn't a talking point for a lot of these players. Of course, you know, it's kind of taboo to talk about NIL. Recruits don't really talk about that because there's such gray area there. And they, I, you know, they probably shouldn't talk about that anyway. But I would say a lot of it is playing time and, and NIL. Yeah. Interesting. Well, listen, Joe, this was a play. I feel like we could, we could keep you all day. Uh, we are out of time, unfortunately, but thanks so much for coming on. Keep up the great work and uh, hopefully we can have you on again uh, in the not too distant future. Absolutely. Anytime guys. Appreciate y'all. 
All right. Appreciate you as well. Joe Tipton uh, joining us. And again, you can uh, find him on X or on uh, Twitter at, uh, let me make sure I get this right, uh, at Tipton Edits. And uh, with that, we will uh, take a time out. We'll wrap up hour number one next. And then uh, in hour number two, we've got uh, Mike Ostrowski joining us from News Magician and Nita Marks joining us from ESPN2's Daily Wager back after this on ESPN Radio.